Good morning and welcome to the solution video to the 2022 Meta Hacker Cup, problem D. Uh, in this problem, we have a graph with a bunch of airports and flights between airports. And importantly, there are two flights along each edge every day. There's one flight in the morning and one flight in the evening. A passenger can take a morning flight and then an evening flight as long as they share an intermediate airport. So for instance, you could go from this airport to this airport to this airport all in one day. Or you could just fly from one airport to the other um, and that would be good as well. The question we need to answer in this problem is if there's some really big event on one particular airport and a lot of people are going to need to travel from this airport to some other one, say this one, we want to know how many people can travel from one airport to another in one day if that's the only people traveling in the network. So in this case, if we want to travel from this airport A to this airport B, we can have two people use this flight in the morning. We can have another two people use this flight in the evening. So four people in total will travel along this edge. We can also have three people fly along this in the morning and then three in the evening. Although five can travel along this edge, we're only able to get three um, across the second edge here. So we can have three travel here and three travel here. And in total, seven people will travel from airport A to airport B over the course of a day. And that's the biggest we can get for these two. Now, we're given a whole bunch of queries, right? Several hundreds of thousands of queries. And these airports A and B can change between them. So we need to come up with some way of processing all of these queries in a relatively fast way. Because the graph can be rather large and there can be a large number of edges, we're gonna need something faster than n squared. And we can assume that the number of nodes, the number of edges, and the number of queries are all roughly in the order of magnitude of several hundred thousand. Um, in particular, we don't necessarily need a linear or like n log n solution. We're okay with something that's n root n. So if that was something that maybe scared you a bit, maybe pause for a minute, try and think of something that uses n to the 1.5, uh, and then we'll, we'll jump into a solution idea here. So before I start, I want to mention there are two completely unrelated solution ideas. They're very cool. I want to mention both of them. Uh, and both of them initially look like, ah, there's no way this is going to be fast enough. Clearly that's an n squared algorithm. But it turns out they both end up being n root n. Uh, in this case, n is either like the max of the number of nodes, edges, and queries. Okay, let's explain what they are. So the first one is maybe something that might be a bit more familiar to you. If you've done um, problems where you need to count the number of four cycles in a graph. Uh, it uses the same sort of approach, but in a slightly different way. And here's the idea. We're going to split the nodes up into two groups. The first group will have a degree bigger than square root of n. And the second one will have a degree smaller than square root of n. We'll call those big nodes and small nodes. The important observation here is because we only have several hundred thousand edges in the graph, we can't have more than square root m big nodes. In other words, there are at most like 400, 500 big nodes in the graph. There aren't that many because Every time we have an edge, it can only add degrees to two big nodes. So there aren't that many big nodes. Um, maybe I'll circle some here. Maybe we'll say that's a big node. Uh, maybe this is a big node as well. It doesn't quite work out with the number of edges, but you can imagine we have other like imaginary edges here that make these quite large, for instance. OK, so now we have these big nodes and the small nodes. The first thing we're going to do is for every big node, we're going to literally just take two steps in all directions. So we'll take one step along this edge and then try one other step for each other node. We'll take one step here, try each of these other steps. Uh, the total runtime here is actually going to be fine. It looks very scary, but it's actually going to be fine. And the reason why is because each edge will be traversed um, at most once from this big node. So it'll be traversed once in this way, and then we'll traverse all of these neighboring edges. So even in the worst case, if we assume every edge in the entire graph is traversed in one of those two steps from, from a particular big node, even if we assume every edge is traveled, uh, each edge will be traveled at most twice. And also, we know this will be, um, like in total, there are only square root n big nodes. So for each big node, we traverse all the edges two times, and there are only square root of them. We're still with an n root n runtime, so we're still OK there. So we can pre-compute the answer for all pairs of nodes where one of them is a big node. 
Now, the only queries we have left are the queries between two small nodes. In particular, two nodes where the degree of both of them is at most square root n. What this means is we're free to have a runtime of square root n per query, right? Because every time we have a query, if we have square root n runtime, our final runtime will be q times square root of n. All right, so how do we do that? Well, if we have, um, if we have a, a query maybe between this node and this node, uh, well, that one we can answer very quickly, right? Because one of them is big. So let's imagine this wasn't big. Pretend it doesn't have very many edges. So now we're answering the query between two small nodes. So the first thing we need to do is check if there's a direct edge between the two. And if there is, we'll add the contribution of that edge times two, and we'll do that separately. It's useful to pay attention to the fact that, like, since this edge is directly between the two, it's not ever going to conflict with a path of length two. So we can we don't have to like special case this edge in any way. We can just ignore it and like pretend maybe we're trying to take two steps. But if we take two steps, we'll never end up here if we take this edge, right? We're always going to end up one away from here. So we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Next, if we have this, uh, these two nodes, right? Both edges have a relatively small degree. What we can do is just have an array of the number of times something is reachable. So if we're at this edge, uh, this node, sorry, we can say, okay, this is reachable five times, this one's reachable two times, this node is reachable two times. We'll do that for this node. We know this is also a small node, so we can iterate through all of the nodes adjacent to it. So we'll say, okay, we can reach this four times, we can reach this one three times, and we can reach this four times. So now we need to look at, for each of the nodes that we changed in red, the minimum of their blue value and their red value. And that'll be what we add to our answer. So in this case, uh, the blue value was zero because we didn't fill anything out. So this will be plus zero. In this case, we have a three and a five. The smaller one is the three. So we'll add plus three to the answer. And then in this case, the smaller one is four. So, or the smaller one is zero, sorry. So we'll add plus zero to the answer. So the number of ways of getting from here to here uh, with a path of length two is just three. The total edge capacities are three. Okay, so that's one possible solution. Um, we have to remember to clear this out. And there are a couple ways of doing this. One is just after we do this, we can go through each of the edges and erase those. And that works just fine too. Uh, there's another almost unrelated way of solving the problem. And it turns out if you do a little bit of somewhat sketchy stuff, you can actually get it to pass really quickly. And here's the idea. There are just two things you need to do. So you might think, okay, let's just start at one node and we'll just like take two steps and then uh, end up somewhere else, right? We'll try all ways of taking two steps from this node. Well, clearly that's not gonna pass, right? Um, we're gonna have a test that's like a very big degree node and you're gonna have a bunch of queries from this node. So if you try and walk through all these edges, you're gonna have order n time in your, in your final solution. So you can't do that. You can't like try all steps for each query. You have to do something smarter. Um, and here's what you can do. Uh, obviously the number of, like since this graph is symmetric, the number of ways of getting from here to here is basically, well, it's exactly the same as the number of ways of getting from here backwards. So even if the query asks us to go from A to B, we can go from B to A and we'll get the same answer. So instead of doing exactly what the query is asking, we can go from the node with the smaller degree. And we can say, okay, we're gonna consider, right, we're here. We're gonna consider, um, I, I missed this node or this edge earlier, but it's not important. We can consider all of the edges that go from this node. And we can see, do any of these have an edge to this? We can look that up in a hash map. So um, yeah, here's the idea. We'll try this node here, this node here, this node here. That's pretending this has the smaller degree. Uh, in this case, actually, it doesn't, so maybe we'll go the other way. Right? So this node has the smaller degree. We'll try this, this, and this. And we'll see, do any of these three nodes have an edge to this node here? And uh, yeah, well, this one does. So in this one, we look this up in a hash map, and it's got a value of 3. So this on its own is not going to save us any time, right? We might have two really big nodes. You might have one really big node that looks like this. You might have another really big node that looks like this. 
uh, this is still going to be n squared. But it turns out, if we do one more very small thing, we can make it n root n. And the only thing we have to do is memoize these queries. So if we've answered one question before, we just have to store it in memory and then not recompute it. And it turns out it is impossible to construct test cases that break this. We have a proof for it in the analysis. Uh, it winds up being something like you only have so much degree to distribute. And even if you make the most vicious test cases possible, it still winds up being n root n or smaller. Uh, so that's a, a very fun solution. It looks like it's going to be very difficult to solve. It looks like there's no way the solution's going to pass, but you do these very small optimizations. Turns out you can, you can pass it. And this is, it's legit. It's not choosing the problem. It is actually a legitimate solution with a provably good runtime. Hope you enjoyed the problem. I thought it was quite nice. And uh, if you solved it, see you in round one. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.